I hope you have been having a great start to your new year. As a more recent change, the Medical Nimbus podcast has partnered up with some great resources for medical education. We are proud to bring you the Medical Nimbus podcast, powered by Inside the Boards. The following interview was so packed of useful information, we decided to split it into two different parts. This first episode is the basics of creating the mnemonic technique of memory palaces by a group of medical students, one of which is also a world memory champion. Make sure to subscribe to the show for future releases and the advanced techniques that will be covered in part two. Here's the show. Welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast. Your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. So on today's show, we have Dr. Alex Mullen and Dr. Kathy Chen. So we actually aren't, we aren't done yet, actually. <laughs> if only. <laughs> yeah, so we, we're, uh, we're in our fourth year right now. Okay. I thought you were completed in... We're almost there. Yeah. We're almost there. We will graduate in May, so... So a little bit about you two. Alex, it looks like you went to Johns Hopkins and graduated with a degree in biomedical engineering and applied mathematics and statistics. Kathy from Princeton with degrees in chemical and biological engineering. And if I'm not mistaken, you also interned at Johns Hopkins. Is that correct? I spent a summer there um, doing research, yes. Quite a resume building up already. You both attended University of Mississippi School of Medicine and co-founders of Mullen Memory, which is a large part of what this discussion will be about today. How did that begin? Yeah, um, so, you know, it really kind of started with uh, memory competition. So, you know, we're, we're both not people who have any kind of special memories at all. You know, we, I, I just came across uh, a memory book that was about memory techniques and competitions when I was in college. So I picked it up when I was a junior in college uh, doing biomedical engineering, like you said. And I, you know, I just wanted to improve my memory for school. You know, I felt like I didn't really have a good memory and I, and it was kind of an intriguing thing to me. I was, you know, reading about all these things people could do. And I was just like, this, this can't be possible. Like there's, there's gotta be some sort of catch or something. But I got into, I got, you know, I got into it because of that book. It's called Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Four. And um, I, you know, wanted to use the techniques for school. Like I said, I didn't really want to get into competitions, but I eventually did just because I started to practice the techniques and kind of, you know, fell in love with it and, and, and wanted to keep getting better and, and improve. Um, and eventually found myself competing in a competition. My first competition was the 2014 USA Memory Championship. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of got hooked on the competition side of things and started competing. And I, you know, I didn't really use it a whole lot for school, actually, funnily enough, because, um, you know, part of it was, you know, my, my courses were mostly engineering. And so they were more kind of math and conceptual based, and it was a little bit harder to apply memory techniques there. Um, and then part of it was just, I hadn't really figured out a good way to really apply it to school just yet. Um, and so it really wasn't until medical school that Kathy and I both kind of sat down, you know, we had talked about the techniques a lot, obviously, and we, we kind of sat down and started to really, you know, figure out a way that we could apply memory techniques to medical school, you know, knowing that medical school is very, you know, memorization heavy, you know, a lot of information you have to, to take in and remember. So we, we really, you know, kind of hunkered down at the beginning of medical school, trying to figure out what to do with these memory techniques. And so that's kind of really where the, the website Mullen Memory was born is we were trying to figure out, you know, how to, to do this effectively. And we, we hit a lot of roadblocks, we struggled, but eventually we kind of got to a point where we felt like the memory techniques were pretty effective. Um, and so we wanted to kind of share that, that experience with other people learning medicine, and hopefully that could, you know, could help them. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how the whole uh, website was born. Great. It's actually something that I've kind of run across so far. It seems to be very difficult to find medically specific training for these memory techniques and really hoping to delve in a little bit more about your experiences with those and maybe some tricks for other students to follow. That was actually uh, something I left out of your initial interview. Alex, you're also a three-time world memory champion. You have seven memory world records, if I'm not mistaken. So you've been at this for quite a while now, have quite a bit of experience. 
Yeah. So I, uh, I have been at it for a while. So I mentioned, you know, that I got into it when I was a junior in college. I think that was in 2013. Um, so it's been about five and a half years now or so that I've kind of competed. I, my last competition was the, the 2017 world championship. So I haven't competed in about a year, but yeah, I, you know, I've been in it for, for a long time. It's been, it's been a very, uh, whirlwind experience, you know, a lot of experiences that I never expected to have. After doing that first competition, I, I, you know, started to travel a lot and go around the world and got to compete in places like China and Singapore and Indonesia, London, and just, it was, you know, really kind of crazy. I never, never expected to do any of those things. Uh, even got to be on a few TV shows. Like uh, one of them is, is called uh, Superhuman on Fox. Um, I got to meet Mike Tyson on that TV show. He was one of the judges. Um, so just, yeah, a lot, a lot of really kind of weird stuff that I, I never expected to do. I was just watching the preview for that the other day. It looked very interesting. It was very, very dramatic. It was. <laughs> and Kathy, I actually don't know as much about how you got into this and your history with it. Was it through meeting Alex or were you interested in memory techniques prior to? Yeah. So, well, I've known Alex for a long time. So Alex and I went to preschool together. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't really know like what my frame of mind was before then. Um, but Alex and I have been together since high school. So, you know, I was around when he first picked up the book his junior year in college. So I don't think you know, at the time, we really knew what a big deal it was going to be for him. So I just kind of in the background, you know, that's great, like, cool book, you know, and then he started competing. And I've just kind of been hanging out tagging along all along. But I think, you know, once he started to win competitions with these memory techniques, that's when around the time we were starting med school, we were like, hey, you know, like these techniques are really incredible, like they work for you. And your memory is not great at all. So there seems like there's probably some sort of application for med students. So that's kind of how I've been involved. I haven't really competed. Um, I don't plan on competing. But um, I do enjoy using the same techniques, you know, in school, and I find them very useful. Okay. I feel like I should have known that part of your history to get no, that's okay. We really, I mean, I don't think we really talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So what was med school like using these techniques? Do you feel it was very beneficial or just on certain topics? Yeah, so I, you know, kind of going back, I, I mentioned that it was kind of difficult for us at first and we ran into a lot of roadblocks. So I, I would say that, you know, we pretty much started to try to use the techniques right out of the gate during our first year, our M1 year, and kind of struggled with it. I used it on biochem a little bit, tried to use it on anatomy. And I, I just, there were, you know, I wasn't quite getting the results that I wanted to, you know, I would create some sort of palace and, you know, a couple, you know, days or, or you know, a week or two later, I'd come back and kind of the images were, you know, not really still there. And I was forgetting things. And basically, you know, it wasn't working too well. And so it took us a little bit of time to kind of figure out how to actually use them effectively. So it probably wasn't until the end of the first year, getting towards the end of the first year, um, that we felt like we kind of hit our stride with the techniques. Um, and I can kind of go over, you know, what it was like to clear some of those roadblocks. But basically, yeah, you know, towards the end of the first year, we kind of got the techniques, you know, down to a point where we thought they were pretty effective. And then from then on out, I think we used them pretty effectively throughout the second year and especially leading up to, to preparation for the step one exam, the USMLE exam. And then, you know, have been kind of using both memory techniques, you know, throughout the, the last, you know, year and a half or so as a clinical, as clinical med students, but then also, um, you know, just kind of branching out more into general learning strategies that have been shown to be effective from research. And so, so we kind of, you know, combined that and, and, and mellow memory sort of become, you know, its birth was really based on memory techniques, but it's kind of become more of a general learning yeah, website. That's kind of, that's just kind of how it or organically sort of developed with a focus on memory techniques, but also kind of looking at lots of other uh, general learning strategies that uh, that have seen support in literature. So I, th I will say, I think like one way um, these memory techniques have really influenced our med school experience is Alex and I took a gap year between our second and third years of med school. And we really didn't touch our textbooks or our notes too much during the year. I mean, we did review a little bit, but not too much. And I think the ease with which we were able to transition back to our clinical studies is, I think, honestly, for me, I think definitely in part due to the effort we took to make good memory palaces and really study well. Yeah, agreed. I think we definitely had a, an easier time transitioning back into, into med school after that year off than we otherwise would have. Mm -hmm. I think going into specific techniques would be very useful as someone that's only in the past few months become a little more aware of the different techniques. It was not used during medical school and I can only picture now how difficult some of that would have been. Like maybe trying to use linking for biochemical pathways or something along those lines. But also the terminology for every different discipline in med school is quite difficult to associate certain topics with. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it was a challenge to figure things out. Um, And we, yeah, we can get into all those kind of specifics if you'd like. Sure. As many specifics as you're willing to go into, I'm sure the audience would be greatly appreciated. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, so the basic technique that we kind of built the site around is, is something called the memory palace technique. So essentially, essentially just to kind of start at the most basic level, what, what you're doing with memory techniques just generally, you know, is you want to take whatever you want to memorize or learn and turn it into some kind of mental picture. And so the picture represents that information. And that is helpful because, you know, pictures are just much more easily remembered by, by the brain than, you know, kind of random facts or, or um, you know, words or things like that. So the, the goal is kind of get to get everything into some sort of representative picture. And then, you know, where the memory palace comes in is that you imagine some sort of physical space that you're familiar with. So it could be your you know, the house you grew up in, the house you live now, you know, any kind of residences that you've had it could be college campus, your med school campus, basically any, any space that you're familiar with. And you try to think of some sort of, you know, path, a mental journey through that place. And then so as you learn, you know, material, you can you know, turn that information into images and then kind of deposit those images along that mental path in the memory palace. Um, and so that's it, it works because, you know, one, like I said, you know, humans visual memory is very strong. Um, and so those pictures kind of tend to stick with you a little bit better um, than, than they would otherwise. And then also people's navigational memory and spatial memory is super strong as well. So, you know, you know, you're able to kind of remember those roots through these memory palaces very easily. And then also, you know, having the memory palace kind of in the background for the images provides an extra hook that, that, or an extra cue that kind of helps you, you know, hold on to that information as well. I think one thing that med students often relate to when we kind of bring up this spatial, uh, you know, the strength of the spatial memory is we'll tell people, you know, your spatial memory is really strong. It, it's really instinctive. And people say, oh, yeah, like that makes sense. Because a lot of times when I'm taking a test and I'm trying to remember something, I can remember exactly exactly where it was on the paper. I just can't remember what the words were. So I think that really resonates with people. Right. People, yeah, people definitely remember, you know, where things are in their notes and things like that. So w- one of the projects that we worked on through the uh, nonprofit Mullen Memory is, is we wrote a section for first aid for the USMLE Step 1 uh, called Learning Strategies. Um, and so we worked with this guy, Tao Lee, who's the, who's the head editor of First Aid. And he said that pretty much the most common complaint that people submit to him every year, why did you change the look of the diagram? Or why did you move, you know, this diagram from this page to that page? Like I had it all, you know, mem- I had the spatial layout of the page memorized. So that's, you know, those kind of spatial connections are really, really strong mm-hmm. with people. And I yeah. think that definitely speaks to kind of why memory palaces are, are, are effective. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the kind of the memory palace technique is sort of the basic technique that we, uh, like I said, we built the site around. First, I think that is very, very true. I still remember if something was written on the left side of the page or right side of the page in my personal notes. So I can definitely see how having certain images in certain locations can be extremely beneficial to a memory when studying, especially if you're already overtaxed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so we, you know, we try to just think about the memory palace technique as sort of a, just a, a better version of kind of having notes, you know, the, the spatial arrangement of your notes on a page, just a, a little bit more powerful version of that. So, I mean, if, if I could just try to condense, you know, I talked about the roadblocks that we kind of ran into, I'll try to condense our kind of primary tips for, for dealing with those roadblocks uh, into three points. So, so one of them is, is, is definitely that when I started doing this, you know, and both of us, you know, this, this goes for both of us, we were making way too many images. <clears throat> I mentioned, you know, you take the, you know, the information, you turn it into some kind of mental picture. You really don't want to be doing that with every single thing you learn, you know, and, and that's what I tried to do at the beginning is just take everything that I was learning, turn it into pictures. And it quickly got very, very overwhelming. And then, you know, you realize that, you know, once you're a week or two into learning the material, a lot of those original images that you made are kind of useless to you because you already kind of understand the material, you know, on a somewhat intuitive level. And so a lot of those images aren't that helpful. And so you end up having this big sea of images, only about, you know, a few of which are actually useful to you and the rest you just sort of understand. So that was the really one of the key, you know, things that we that we've changed moving forward is that we really try to be very selective about what information we turn into images, you know, a lot of stuff, we just we read it, and we watch a video about it, we understand it, we don't make anything for it. But for those kind of more unintuitive, hard to remember details, those are the kind of things that we do create mental pictures for and place them in memory palaces. And so just just to give an example of that, you know, uh, a lot of things, you know, in, for instance, in microbiology or in pharmacology, these are things that, that tend to be kind of unintuitive and hard to remember, you know, the names of drugs or the side effects of drugs, they don't always explain those very well, or, you know, what kind of properties different bacteria have, you know, these are all kind of unintuitive things that memory techniques tend to be helpful for. So that's the primary one is just not not over making images. Another one involves kind of the creation of memory palaces. And a lot of people think that memory palaces, you know, and I I felt this way myself for a while, 
uh, that they take a lot of time to set up, you know, and it's like, well, why am I going to spend all this extra time trying to go around and think of memory palaces and create memory palaces? That's just going to add a lot of you know, time to my overall study time. And the way that we try to minimize that, that barrier of, of, you know, spending time making palaces is really just to, you know, we have a, basically a brainstormed set of, of palace ideas um, that we kind of add to periodically. Like location. Right. So, you know, I have a, a spreadsheet where I, you know, I, I'm just, I, I've, I've written down, you know, hundreds of possible palaces like my house, you know, my parents' house, my brother's apartment, this restaurant, that restaurant. And I just had this kind of list of all these different places that I could use potentially as palaces. And then when I pick something that I want to learn and use a palace for, I'll just go to that sheet, pick it. I haven't done any work, you know, in terms of choosing locations or creating a journey for that particular place yet, but I'll just choose the, the locations that I'm going to store images as I'm learning the material. So, you know, in that way, you're not really actually... Um, spending a whole lot of extra time creating the palace. You just sort of create the palace as you go. As he's walking through the location, he's dropping images as he walks along, basically. Right. Well, you, you know, and, and so I'll say, you know, oh, okay, I want to devote, you know, I want to have a couple images for bacteria X. And so I'll choose a room, you know, in that palace that I've chosen and then just pick a couple spots right there only for those images that I, that I just created. Um, so that kind of hopefully, you know, lowers that barrier. The last thing, um, the third thing is basically starting to use some of these general learning strategies that I mentioned. So two of them that are, that are probably the most validated and supported by learning science are called retrieval practice and spacing. So retrieval practice basically just means that when you review material, instead of just going back and rereading it, really try to actively test yourself on it, try to actively recall it and bring it to memory rather than just rereading it. You know, so that's something that I always try to do when I'm reviewing material is I try to actively recall it instead of just reread it. And that actually kind of boosts the long-term retention of that material uh, more than it more than it otherwise would. Uh, and then you combine that with spacing, which essentially is spreading your learning and review of material out over time, you know, rather than cramming it all quickly. So, you know, med students and, you know, the way that medical schools are set up is, you know, encourages this. Are, you know, have a tendency to cram, you know, they, they have a test coming up, they, they spend, you know, a couple of days just like cramming, you know, this anatomy or that anatomy, uh, and then they just sort of forget it, and they don't come back to it. And that's really a recipe that really kind of destroys your long term retention, you know, so what we do is we try to, you know, space our, our, our learning out over time, and we'll review something, you know, day after we learn it, and then, you know, a couple days after that, or a week or two weeks after that, and then kind of spread it out, you know, further into the future, so that we're always kind of coming back to old material. And, you know, kind of combining that with retrieval practice, like I said, um, when we review that material, we don't just reread it, we try to recall it actively. So, you know, that's something that we do, uh, both for just material that we learn, but also for, you know, the material that we do turn into memory palace images. You know, we try to recall those, those memory palace images actively, um, and then review them over time periodically, you know, spaced out over time. Those kind of combination of things 